G'day everyone, welcome to Ruin Hammer Season 3 Episode 11. Thank you so much all you guys for joining us across Facebook and YouTube, you guys listening on the podcast platforms as well. Extra special shout out to all our wonderful Patreon subscribers as well. It's because of your awesome support enables us to bring this visual presentation to you via Restream and bring you the content and the guests that you'll enjoy so much. So yeah, big shout out to you guys. And how's Hammer going tonight, mate? Kia ora, bro. Kia ora, everyone. Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, again, I just want to echo your, your thanks to our wonderful Patreon subscribers uh, whose support allows us to do what we do here every week, which is uh, provide the best Warriors content on all social media platforms. And, and just a reminder to everyone that has tuned in tonight, the reason we do the show live is to get the involvement of, of you guys who are watching. So please, as we move through the discussion points tonight, um, you know, join the conversation, leave your comments. Um, mate, what a weekend it was. Uh, we packed in quite a bit on Saturday afternoon. And aside from the game result, uh, it was a pretty good day. Yeah, mate. Awesome day. Jam-packed. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, as you said, take the result out of it. Awesome day it was. Uh, mate, spent with the legend himself, Warrior number 76, Big Mark Tukey, and his beautiful partner, Rach. It was such a surreal feeling to be watching the game with one of our uh, one of the greats of our club real warriors legend cult hero that he is and dead set isn't he a man of the people uh, he was like saying hello to everyone he was posing for photos he's just such a personable person and you know always so giving of his time and and rach she's just such a beautiful human and it was a real highlight of the day to be able to enjoy the game with them and um some good banter we had going there as well particularly yeah. you, and, you and Tix's multis <laughs> yes yeah. uh absolutely it was mate yeah uh everything you then you, you just said then is spot on uh, i couldn't have put it better myself and yet um the two, one thing tooks and i have in common is we don't mind a, a little dabble on the on the footy um anytime try scorer multis happening left right and center um i think i i think i got the closest i think i think i got five five out of a six leg multi uh while she the only one not scoring for me for my multi to get up but he was desperate for you and Aitken to get over, wasn't he? For you and Aitken, yeah. <laughs> I was trying like, for Walshie. Yeah. We, we got with five minutes to go. So, mate, we'll take a try from Walshie and you and Aitken right now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, mate, we also got to catch up with um, former Warriors NRLW coach Brad Donald, um, who works for the NRL now. Uh, he saw what we were posting on um, social media, identified exactly where we are sitting in the stands and, and made his way to come <laughs> over and say hello. Um, <laughs> mate, pasty skin redhead. He couldn't be in the sun for too long. He had to get out of the sun. <laughs> and then, and then um, we also caught up with um, Channel 7 Journo and, and friend of the show and uh, a guest of, that we've had on here in uh, Katie Brown. Um, uh, they were both there to support the NRLW game. It was great to catch up with them, uh, have a bit of a chat. And then after the game, um, you know, we made the effort to hang around. Uh, we made our way over to the Preston Campbell stand and uh, we had a quick chat with Cam George and, and Justin Morgan, who were awesome to, of them to give us their time. And then made our way out to the team bus and uh, waited to see some of the boys when they came out. And as always, mate, they were so giving of their time, not just to us, but for the other fans that waited around to see them. Uh, but you could see in their demeanour and also by the conversations we had with the boys that um, they were gutted about that loss. Yeah, we said it last week when we, the, the previous week, sorry, after we'd seen them after the Dragons loss and they were disappointed. But this one, like the guys were all saying the same thing. It was like they beat themselves. And it was, again, really refreshing to hear the squad taking that ownership and responsibility and, and recognising, I guess, where it all went wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I want to give an extra special shout out to Dave and Nat Curran, who were just two amazing special people. And we thank them for bringing us into our circle and allowing us to catch up with them for dinner after the game. Just had a had a fantastic uh, chat with Dave and Nat and um, great to get some insights from, you know, the parents perspective of a, of a first grade player. So that was, Yeah, that was it is. Uh, yeah. That's right, mate. They are. They're, they're two very down to earth people. Um, Spending time with them, you can see where Josh gets his attributes from because he's yep. such a, a down-to-earth, level-headed, um, you know, person as well. Uh, the success that he's having now doesn't go to his head, and that that comes from you know great parenting um, that from the the Currens. Um, it is interesting that you said uh, you know it's it's awesome to get a parent's perspective um, because that's it's something that we've we've discussed a little bit in the last couple of weeks off air. You and you, uh, yourself and myself. And something that we're, we're probably going to do midway through the season is get 
um, some of the parents of the players on uh, so that we can, you know, get their um, thoughts and, and opinions and their, their feelings of, of, you know, when their, their son made their NRL debut or, or their daughter, um, you know, uh, when they made their NRL or NRLW debut, when, um, you know, what it's like watching them every week. Uh, you know, we watched Doug last week sitting there in the stand like this, uh, every time. <laughs> The, the whole game, and, and we even we had the same riding it, riding every moment. Yeah, yeah, we had the same conversation with Joe Price last week as well. So yeah, getting her um her uh thoughts and opinions in regards to when Steve played uh, as a uh, wife of a NRL player, and then also her brother Brent, uh, who went through so many injuries as well. Um, so we're going to do a special midway through the season where we get those uh, wonderful people on. They've all. Agreed to come on and have a bit of a uh, in-depth chat with chat with us, um, but uh, yeah, mate, um, should we get in into the nitty gritty and, and pull this one apart? Yes, mate. Let's do oh, it as we say before we do. Off. Oh. Before we do, uh, Richie Sterling, our good mate Richie from, um, from the stand up <laughs> over in New Zealand, he's come up with a That's a, a, a multi yeah a multi idea for this week. Maybe you could have a bet <laughs> uh, which Tigers captain has to do the losing speech after the game this weekend. <laughs> Possibly. Um, okay. Yeah. There's 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 only five to choose from. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. <laughs> exactly. Let's get into it, mate. Mate, let's get that band aid ripped off and let's go over Saturday afternoon's game out there at Seabus. Uh, it's got it. a graphic there that we're going to put up. Um, so the Titans versus the Warriors. Titans twenty. Over the Warriors, 18. So try Mazu with a double. Furmore, a try in the first set of the game. And Phil Sami with tries for the <laughs> Titans. Sexy Sexton, two from four. Warriors, 18. Uh, Egan, Montoya and Pompey with the tries. Walsh, three from three. As I said before, Titans with the absolute best possible start on the other side of the coin, the worst possible start for us. Um, a try in the first set of the game to uh, Bo Furmore, Eli Katoa missing a, a tackle on AJ Brimson and Lodge, maybe a little bit lazy on the inside. Um, although we did find out later that he was quite crook and uh, with that stomach bug, had him vomiting pre-game, so uh, had no energy. Probably, probably shouldn't have played. But anyway, um, yes, definitely not the start we wanted. That's an understatement. And the Titans' second try to Greg Marzu, there was just a massive overlap. Montoya jamming in on the defending uh, Paddy Herbert and gave Marzu a salute passage to the try line there. Actually. Yeah, a lot of criticism for Montoya being out of position. Um, but I, I re-watched this a couple of times. And, and um, look, we play a compressed defence. And in a compressed defensive line, he had to follow his inside defenders in. Um Defensively, the team was very poor in that first half. And the compressed defence is only effective if you have a good line speed to stop the ball movement getting to the edges. Um, it needs the defenders to tie into the man next to them. And if not, that's when gaps appear in the line and enables the opposition to get those line breaks on, on the inside and get over the advantage line. And, um, um, you know, the fact that I was, was jamming in... Um, you know, for the Titans' second try, you and Aitken came out of the line very quickly, and then he stopped on his heels uh, for some reason, and it kind of opened up a bit of a gap between himself and CHT, and CHT then who had to jam in on um, Jaden Campbell, and then that meant Berry then had to jam in on David Fafida, and then Montoya had to jam in on on Herbert, and that just left Marzio unmarked. Um, and then Walsh gave up on that play too. Uh, he could have stopped Marzio from running around and scoring under the post, but he, he kind of gave up on that play. Uh, yeah, and that's one of those effort areas that Brownie was so critical of in his post-match press conference. Um, you know, for all the gushing that fans do about Walsh's attack, it's those one percent effort areas that he really needs to work on. Yeah, definitely. Um, so with the score being twelve nil, uh, we did work incredibly hard to get back into the game. So uh, Wade Egan with a dummy half barge over, catching catching out some lazy defenders to get to get us on the board, making it twelve six. And the Warriors' second try was a nice piece of show and go. Uh, the ball play from CHT drawing the defenders in and created the overlap on the outside for a hectic Montoya to get over there in the corner. A nice uh, sideline conversion from Walshie. Then the try to Pompey right on half time, but we didn't even realize was happening when we were there at the game. Um, nah. it, was, it, made, it was fortuitous. 
Um, and he gave the Warriors an unlikely halftime lead. So an offload from Bunty, a grubber from Ash Taylor, who almost got an accidental <laughs> try assist there, I think. Um, Pompey got his hands to the ball after Sammy failed to ground it. So they were saying it was – they were looking for a torso grounding. So you're allowed to ground with your torso, but – Obviously, maybe it was a maybe it was a pelvic grounding, not a torso grounding. Um, yeah. But anyway, we we were just sitting there having a chat, and then all of a sudden they said over the loudspeakers, uh, they were obviously reviewing it. So that was a bit of a surprise. But yeah, eighteen sixteen halftime lead to the Warriors, and after another yeah. great sideline kick. Uh, good start for us too for the, with the uh, second half because the Titans kicked out on the full to start that second half. And, and uh, we had a chance with the ensuing set. Um, and that was where we really needed some smart play from our halves, point or a repeat set to build pressure. Um, for the second half, though, we were much better defensively in that second half. It was a real arm wrestle. Uh, a couple of missed opportunities, CHT being held up, Curran going close, uh, Pompey's draw. The re- result could have been much better. How, how about um, Josh Curran with another charge touchdown and then uh, of the ball? He's... Um, well, we had the great man. Well, we had the great man Steve Price with us last week, and there was no one better at the charge down than him. So maybe, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was interesting, and yeah, two as you said, two charge downs in two weeks. So it's it's one of those things. Remember what Price said? Wayne Bennett told him when he came into Queensland camp, "Don't you think about doing any of those charge downs?" But <laughs> like the, the two that the two that Joshy has gotten in the first two weeks, they almost paid off big time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what, something that uh, opposition will no doubt be looking out for. Um, yeah, absolutely. With these close contests, we need, to, we need to find a way to close them out. And both games, we started poorly. Uh, we we worked, did the hard yards to work back into the game, like to find the lead and then not hold on to it due to basically errors. Um, Rocco Berry, uh, much like Montoya, has copped it in the fan warriors fan pages i did have a bit of a sneaky look during the week and uh yeah in terms of barry's performance what did you think was the criticism warranted um some criticism yes but not to the level it's been hurled at him um look rocco had some poor choices in attack under pressure he tried some fifth tackle kicks that didn't come off and and he died with the ball at the end of the set a couple of times but maybe the question should be asked why did he even have the ball at that on, on those fifth times? Weren't, weren't our halves controlling the game better? Um, why were they putting it in the hands of a 10-game a rookie um, to come up with a miracle play at that point in time? Uh, like I said, it was only Rocco's 10th game. Uh, prior to the NRL, um, the kid had played, I think, five other games of rugby league. He's effectively learning how to play rugby league whilst playing rugby league in the best competition in the world. It's probably not ideal circumstances to be learning how to play, but you know, he's he's getting uh, uh, he's learning on the run, and imagine what he's like when he's a fifty gamer. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing beats experience. And uh, no. Reese Walsh back from suspension. I thought his involvement and uh, was effective. He looked dangerous uh, with every touch. He was trying to create opportunities. He plays great eyes up footy. Um, what did you make of his performance, mate? I liked it. I thought um, I thought he played quite well. Uh, again, like there's a couple of effort areas that he really worked on. Uh, but then again, um, there's effort areas that a lot of players need to work on. Um, but Reese's involvement with the ball in hand were very, very good. He, he tried to create a lot of opportunities. Um, he almost looked like he was um, playing, you know, as, as an extra half, which is what you want uh, your, your fullback to be doing in that. Um, he even took on a lot of king role as well. Um, so, yeah, I, mate, I thought he was good. Um, he'll be better for the run, uh, getting that one uh, first game of the season. Um, I think, uh, yeah, he'll he'll just get better and better as the season goes on. And, um, you know, he's had a full off season now with the boys. Uh, he'll, he'll know his role quite well in the team. So, um, yeah, I thought he was good. Uh, he is a small-bodied fullback, though, so... Um, um, he did a little bit one-on-one defensively, but then again, you know, Preston Slater, and, uh, Preston Slater, Billy Slater, and Preston Campbell were both small guys, and and, and they were good defenders. So, um, you Absolutely. know, I think, yeah. yeah, I think that's something that's going to come with maturity for for Walsh. He can't be the greatest player in the world, and he's you know into 
his 16th game in the NRL. Um, but yeah, he, he'll get there. He's going very well, very well. Um, the halves, I thought, uh, CHT was solid in his in his preferred position and really controlled the game, particularly in the in the opposition half. He kicked a great 40-20 and, and was dominant. Was the dominant kicker with 260 kicks. Ash Taylor, um, he was probably the preferred option in the seven jersey until Sean Johnson returns, but uh, injury has seen uh, him drop out this week and Katie brought back into the team. And uh, you can look, look at those stats that we got up right now, the comparison between the the guys in game one being Johnson and Nicarima and the guys in game two, Harris, David, Ash Taylor. And you can see that uh, for me, Johnson and, and Harris, David were the dominant half in those uh, two games. Um, look, Ash Taylor with only 59 kick metres. Who, for a guy who's considered a really good general play kicker, uh, and as I said, I know Walsh took on some of the responsibility uh, five, five or six kicks for 140 kick metres, but, mate, you want your half control game, and I don't think Taylor did that. Um, and the glaring one for me is the 11 missed tackles. He only made 14 tackles, and he missed 11. Um that's a massive red flag in his performance for me. What 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 did you make of his uh, of our Haas performances? And, and I mean, you, you just look at those keepers. John Johnson was able to get in that round yeah. one game, which you know enabled us to stay in that game a little. Uh, bit disappointing. Our kick meters in game two. What yeah, do you we, think? Def- we definitely struggled kick wise, and I mean, we said a number of times at the game, like it was either kicking straight to the fullback or not finding space. Um, yeah, Ash Taylor still looks short of a gallop. And as I said, like 11 missed tackles is is not ideal. Um, on the other hand, I thought Chanel was quite solid. He was he was heavily involved um, with most yep. things. And he was unlucky not to get a try there in the first half as well. Uh, you said it before, though. Um, one of the most glaring observations was that why does Rocco Berry keep ending up with the ball on the fifth tackle like three or yep. four times? And there was yeah. a, a, another another couple of times where Taylor got tackled on the on the fifth tackle as well. Yep. Um, which you know says says a bit about the communication and the and the way that they're kind of the play is unfolding. It's not not running according to plan. Look, look, I, I don't mind a centre or because you and Aiken got caught out a couple of times with the ball in his hand on last tackle. I don't mind an edge backer ending up with the ball in his hand on last tackle, five meters out from the line. If your halves are setting up or set up play to be attacking that area, but there was no attacking set up play before that. It was just pretty much dummy half, pass, pass, and he ended up with a ball and it's something. Um, you know, they hadn't worked to one side to try and open up the defence a little bit or anything like that. It was it was like they had no ideas and, and that was the best they could come up with at the time. We, we did note while we were there that there was about three or four times when they just took the tackle five metres out. And we're like, well, I guess it does beat kicking it dead and giving away the seven tackle set. But on the other side of the coin, you would never expect to see that that kind of um, end of set that many times in a game. No, uh, Mark Roberts has said Cam Munster missed the same amount of tackles as Taylor did. Complaint wouldn't have helped either. No, it wouldn't have. And in regards to Cam Munster, uh, uh, I don't care. I don't care how many tackles Cam Munster missed because Cam Munster doesn't play Warriors. And, um, uh, yes, yeah. uh, tongue-in-cheek comment, mate. Um, but, yeah, I see I see your point. But, yeah, for me, you know, Ash Taylor's, uh, you know, that was his, his opportunity to really impress, especially against his old club uh, in front of his family and friends and, you know, try to make that Sun jersey his own and, and possibly even the six jersey for when Sean comes back and he, he just didn't do it. Nah, we expected um, a bit more. Yeah, he had, he had everything everything there to play for as well. So, yeah, yeah look, I'm hope, I'm definitely hoping that he gets another opportunity and I'm sure he'll um, he'll have another he'll have a big game uh, further on. Oh, with season. Shawnee Glass in the side? Yeah, uh, hey, Mr. Glass. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have another opportunity somewhere down the line. <clears throat> uh, I just want to talk about the front rowers for a minute Is uh, if Brad's here. Um, the front row rotation with some massive numbers, AFB, Bunty, and Pene, all with big meters, high involvement stuff. Pene, mate, he's such a great buy for the club. He brings a level of professionalism and expectation coming from that storm system that he can hopefully filter into our club. And, and speaking to him after the game, he's such a humble young man. He's very softly spoken as well. And, yep. yeah, just, just an all-around great dude. 
Yeah, big meters from those from those boys. Um, 186 meters for for AB, 145 for Bunny. Um, the interesting thing, uh, there was a stat that somebody posted on a, a page um, the other day in regards to Aaron Penne. And, um, mate, I like the energy he brings onto the field. And in the past two games, when we've been down on the scoreboard by 12-0, uh, he comes on. And when he goes off, we're actually leading. We're in front. Um, it's a massive, uh, like, you know, I know he's not the one that we are leading, but it's, it's kind of a very... Um, uh, significant stat in his favour that, um, you know, he provides probably a, a good deal of energy that he brings. Um, the other one too, I thought, uh, Jesse Arthurs, I, I thought he had a really strong debut in the centres. Uh, um, I think he's done more than enough to make that position his and, and he'll be better in the cakes as he finds his feet in the team. But I, I thought it was a really, really um, good performance for him. What did you think of Jesse's performance, mate? Yeah, he was solid. Um, I... He probably would have liked him to make a few more runs, uh, but he looked good in defence. And when he did run the ball, he ran it strongly and unlucky not to have a try assist there as well. It was a bit yep. of a Petahiku style flick out there that unfortunately went uh, through the bread basket. But, uh, yeah, no, he looked he looked good, impressive, and as you said, he should be uh, he should be a fixture in that centre position. Absolutely, and I know we're fast because sounding like Josh Curran fanboys. But uh, what can you say about this guy, mate? Just 20 in our career, 22 games. Uh, and he's fast becoming man. Um, another outstanding performance for us. 148 run metres, 51 post contact, three tackle breaks, one offload, 44 tackles um, in the middle, a, a, a game high for us. I think uh, Wade Egan with 40 text. Um, and, and he's even now on the radar of Freddie Fittler. Uh, there was it's a, great to read that, wasn't it? The comments it was. It was awesome yeah. to read that. Yeah, um, it's, it's always good to, to you know, um, guys are getting noticed for the good stuff that they're doing. Um, and he's just doing it in, in spades. Is, um, yeah, ab- absolutely fantastic uh, on field on dis- field display. He got our Torres for the match again this week with um, Adam for late getting the two points. And, and we thought Chanel was quite good in the uh, – in the in his uh, role, we gave him one point. So, yeah. Um, Joshy's now on six, Adam's on four, and Chanel and are both on a point each. Yes, exactly. Um, I would like to now talk about the outside backs. This is a bit of a contentious topic as well. A lot of uh, experts out there on social media uh, are calling for the sacking of quite a number of our outside backs. So let's take a look at the overall situation that we have at the club. So last week's squad was Montoya, Pompey, Berry, and Arthurs. So look at Montoya, the most experienced, 74 games. Pompey has 35 games, Arthurs 30 games, and Berry just the 10 games. So really not much experience between them all. And apart from Montoya's last season, none of the guys had stringed together successive games in high numbers, really. And Arthurs seven games came in 2019, I think, for the Titans. Pompey, 10 games in 2020 before his 14 straight games for us last year, 21. Uh, Montoya's best was 12 games for the Bulldogs back in 2018. So not really what you would call regular first grade stuff. So I guess we've got to acknowledge that there's a pretty inexperienced three quarters, three quarter line that we're putting out on the park and, you know, errors are going to happen. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, calling for players to be dropped is one thing, but the only options that we have are Ed Cozy, play, only played the five games, and Junior Rituva, who's yet to play NRL. So I guess we kind of people need to manage their expect expectations a little bit there and not just we can't just come in with a broom and sweep out all these players because we just don't have the the um the cattle there at the moment, especially with uh Vili and um Dallin injured. Yeah, that's right. Um yeah, it, it's. I mean, at the beginning of the season, I said that I would have liked to have seen you and Aitken retained in the in the centres, but Brownie has decided that he's a back rower now, so that's where he's playing. Um, and I'm sure if if push came to shove and we got any more injuries in our back line, that um, you know you'll spot there or even merch for that matter. But for the you know what, what four eight eight guys that are now um, thirty man roster that are considered 
outside backs. Um, two are injured and six are available. And as you said, the two, two that aren't being used in fair at the moment are Ed Cozy, um, who's played the only played five games and is still learning, and Junior Atuva, who is yet to play. And I think um, they're probably going to be getting a little bit of game time in um, the Cup. And, and you could say the same goes for um, uh, for Jack. Murchie and Ben Murdoch Masilla. Um, you know, we have very reliable information. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, they should be brought in the side. But we have very reliable information that due to injury and other circumstances, those two guys are significantly underdone in terms of fitness levels um, to be ready for the under. We saw, you know, Murch was the 18th man in round one and Benny only got 17 minutes in um, round one and then dropped back to um, Q Cup for the Redcliffe. And they both played for Redcliffe this past week. Merch got um, 80 minutes in uh, the back row. He ran for 118 metres. He won offload four tackle breaks and 23 tackles, which was a, a good solid work for Merch. Um, and Ben got 53 minutes. He ran for 81 metres, two offloads and 20 tackles. But I think both those boys need to spend, you know, another week or two in Q Cup just to get some match fitness up. Um, but the, the experts on social media calling cuts to the squad this week, replacing, uh, you know, them with guys playing Q Cup. Um, is just ridiculous. That Q Cup side got smashed 26 to 4 last weekend, by the way. So, um, after the game on Saturday, a lot of the Warriors fan, uh, uh, social media fan sites were aiming up saying, drop Montoya, drop Pompey, drop Berry, uh, bring in this guy, bring in that guy. And then, um, yeah, the, the guys that they're calling for were smashed 26 4, and then there was nothing else posted after that. So, Am I missing something here? Is there is there something mate, I'm missing? I'm going to shoulder arms and let that go through to the keeper. <laughs> okay, mate, you do that. Uh, Caden Rogers has has noticed that the do's out again tonight. Uncle Uncle yeah. Jesse, I've never seen you without a cap on on the show. Why have you ditched the cap two nights in a row? All I've got to say to that is, have mercy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, mate. I did have to go. I did have to go and look up what uh, Uncle Jesse's catchphrase was. By the way, it has been a long time since I watched Full House. Anyway, yeah. that being said, <laughs> that being said, okay, let's yeah, let's look at the round two results and some of the other games. Um, yep. Okay, so Thursday night we had the Storm versus the Rabbits. Interesting game this one. Storm getting away with a one point victory. Storm fifteen. Coates Pappenhausen Munster tries. Grant one from three. Pappenhausen with the all-important field goal and golden point to the Rabbits, 14. Johnston, Paulo and Graham with the tries. Mitchell, uh, none from three, but he did absolutely slot a two-point field goal. It's nobody's business. Um, yeah. Yeah, shout-out to Craig Bellamy for his 500th game as Storm coach. Absolutely remarkable achievement. Um, he has a win percentage of just over 70% at the Storm, 351 wins from his 500 games coach. That is just off the chain. Um, South went into the game with a 0 to 17 record in Melbourne, which has now been extended to 0 to 18. That is some drought. Yeah, it um, is, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. Interesting that uh, Demetrius chose to start Cam Murray from the bench, um, opting for Sevilla Havili at lock. And the scoreline of this one, I don't think was really a true indication of how the game was actually played. And although there was those hectic final few minutes, and they were exciting, don't get me wrong, it was actually a pretty much mistake-riddled game. Um, Melbourne did appear to be in control, and they scored their points in a 13-minute period from the 11th to 24th minute, and then not a single more point until golden point extra time with the field goal. So it was probably a little bit of false reading there. Um, South handling was awful, and they again, they just looked to be... They lack direction, like running into each other, running around in circles, kind of more of the stuff we saw against the Broncos. They completed just 61%, uh, but they did have 54% possession. Uh, Jackson Paulo's move to the centre has not really worked out. Demetrius was forced to move him back to the wing and Tane Milne into the centres because he was struggling that, that much. So the Rabbits up to the 68th minute were diabolical in attack and Melbourne uncharacteristically vulnerable and ill-disciplined there so 40 missed tackles from melbourne and 10 penalties conceded and 17 errors which have which would have made the super coaches blood boil and let's be honest it doesn't take much to make his blood boil no. <laughs> um yeah as i said before absolute monster two-point field goal which put us into golden point territory 
and then Pappenhausen uh, just slotting it to ice the game. And South would be starting to realise, I think, that losing coach Wayne Bennett, Adam Reynolds and Dan Gagai has been a costly exercise. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I mean, I remember watching that game last week. It seems so long ago now. So much has happened since then. Um, shout out to Charlie Ras, who's yeah, tuned in okay. to watch. And he, he, Gossy. I will say, Gossy. yeah, okay. Gossy. Gossy. Okay. I Thank appreciate, you, appreciate for the, that, mate. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. From now on, Gossy. Yeah. Apologies. Gossy. Apologies for getting that wrong. Yeah. And apologies to Ed. Mm. Uh, um, the next game, uh, which was first game of Friday night, was it? Uh, Dragons yes. versus the Panthers. Uh, Dragons 16, slow and sewer, Lomax tries, Lomax two from three goals. Panthers kick out two, Eleni tries, Crichton four from four goals. Um, made emotional scenes shared on social media uh, prior to this one as Big Villy was surprised by the Panthers with family flying in from Fiji to present him with his 100th game milestone jersey. Um, Ivan, a man with very strong family values, uh, that had his fingerprints all over it. Um, as fate would have it, it was kick out that scored the first try of the game, charging down a Ben Hunt kick and, and showing great skills for a big man to get down so low to regather a poorly bouncing ball to score his 30th career try in his 100th game. And then later in the first half, he got himself a double running off. Uh, um, Tarek Sims, who is supposedly on the outer for the Dragons, was a surprise inclusion for the game. I thought he played quite well. Uh, George Burgess played his first first game for the Dragons, and it might have been his last uh, back in the NRL after 12 months away from the game due to a hip injury, and um, now he's just inappropriately touching people. Um, Panthers just play the game at a much faster pace than any other mate. Uh, that's their strength. Uh, that's what they did the other night. They don't have the biggest forward pack, and in this one, the Dragons had a huge size advantage, but their forwards are the, the, so fit and mobile that they just wear down their opposition and play with such speed. Uh, that they just capitalise on the, that fatigue factor. Um, however, the Panthers did score 14 points in that 10 minutes when Jaden Sewell was in the sin bin for his late hit on Sean O'Sullivan. Mm. And that proved to be a costly error for the Dragons because that was um, pretty much all the points the Panthers scored. Um, they they again had uh, Lomax put in the bin, in uh, I think that was in the half, and they showed much better composure then when Lomax was in the sin bin. They didn't leak any points. Uh, they did show, the Dragons did uh, do when they hold the ball and complete their sets. They were able to compete with and match the energy and, in and intensity of the Panther Panthers. And um, handling and their fifth tackle options probably let them down. Be better execution, it could have probably ended up in a, in a different result um, and maybe a Dragons victory. And I must say, I didn't rate the Dragons at all. I picked the Dragons to finish well down the table. And I know we're only two games in. And not every team can finish in the top eight, but the um, Dragons are making me eat my words at the moment because, you know, they put us to the sword in a game two weeks ago and then they really competed with the, uh, the um, I don't know what it says, Cowboys Bulldogs up there. Uh, they really competed with the uh, in this game. So, um, yeah, it was a good game of footy. Yeah, promising signs for the Red V. Uh, moving on to the second game. <laughs> well, Roosters versus Manly was the next game. Uh, the yep. Roosters getting away with a 26-12 victory over the Sea Eagles. Roosters butcher a double. Hutchinson, Tupo, and Tupanua tries. And Walker, three from five. Manly, our old mate Carl Lawton and Daly Chair Evans getting a late try. Garrick, two from two. Roosters with a few changes to their starting lineup. Most notably, uh, Connor Watson dropping back to the bench with Drew Hutchison starting. And two of the competition heavyweights, both coming off significant losses in round one. And uh, looking to obviously kickstart their season. So the Roosters looked like they'd identified Manly's right edge defense as a weakness. They hit that edge with their opening three tries. The Roosters playing at a speed and tempo, and Manly just couldn't go with them in that, that first half. They were left behind. And Victor Radley playing lock is effectively another ball player in the middle, which gives the Roosters six ball players in Walker Kiri, Tedesco, Watson, Radley, and Hutchison. It makes their attack hard to predict and um and extremely difficult to defend absolutely and they 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 did a good job again of shutting down tommy turbo's ha uh, first half involvements and it was interesting to see jake travoyevich playing his first receiver for manly and um yeah early in the sets with their own in their own half and we hardly saw foreign and dc really they really struggled with execution and their pass selection there as well 
Manly's second half was played. They came out with a lot more intensity, putting pressure on the Roosters' defence. But aside from the dummy half crash over from uh, Mad Dog Lawton, Manly were unable to turn um, sustained pressure into points, which would be a bit of a concern. Uh, Manly, seriously, a one-man band is the question. And if Turbo doesn't have a high involvement, then Manly struggle to stay in the contest, it would seem. And the cost of fuel has Turbo running on empty tank. It does. The cost of fuel is ridiculous. And, <laughs> yeah, they, he's not a Turbo at the moment. He's a rotary, I think. Um, yeah, mate, it, a lot of question marks about Manly at the moment. Um, yeah, Turbo, yeah. I don't know if, if the two teams have worked him out um, in the first weeks or whether he's having trouble just getting himself into the game. Uh, we all what'll have, when Turbo's going to turn it on, and that is whenever they play uh, the Warriors. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, of course, it's a given. We'll be back it's a given, mate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, mate, yeah, I don't know. Manly need to kickstart their season uh, uh, pretty quickly if they want it. I know they went 0-4 last year and then made the Cs, but um, that was on the back of, the, of Turbo having a, a freak season, you know, like Ben Barber's 2012 or Jared Haynes' 2009, I think it was, or 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not going to do that again. And so um, teams have kind of worked him out. So, yeah, I, I think at the moment they're a one-trick pony on the Seagulls and they're, they're definitely going to struggle to win games. We'll still have to see how they go. Um First game on Saturday was us. So the second game was the Sharks versus Eels. Um, Sharks, 18, Mulatalo, Katoa, Tracy, Wilton, tries. Um, Hines, one from four goals. And um, the Eels, it was Moses, uh, Reed Marnie, uh, tries. Gutherson, four from four. Um, yeah, the Sharks absorbed plenty of early pressure before uh, our mate, Pre-Jack Mulatalo, the home fans, something to cheer about in the first match at Points Bet Stadium since 2019. And didn't they rave on about the first game at Points Bet Stadium since 2019? Uh, it's all that I can spoke about. How, how have they managed? How have they managed? <laughs> how have they managed? They have played at Points Bet since 2019, blah, blah. They're playing oh, 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 come come here, playing Sharks. Come home. here. Yeah. <laughs> they played up the road at Net Strata. They still had home fans. If we don't get similar types of... Um, uh, you know, gushings of when the Warriors get home this year. Um, yeah, but it'll just show how true to form Fox Sports and um, all those uh, broadcasters are. Anyway, yeah, my little yep. thing. Uh, Mulatalo uh, turned a try saver when he forced Lee Simonson to plant the ball line. Um, the tackle was pretty vital, proved costly for Mulatalo. He was bleeding from the head gash and eventually forced from the game at half time, and he's now out for this week. So so um, I'm thinking that's an injury that's kept him, obviously kept him from being named. Uh, fellow Shark swinger Sione Katoa extended his team's lead when he crossed untouched in a minute. Mitchell Moses got Parramatta into the game with a moment moment of brilliance on the last tackle before half time when he from dummy half chipped over Dale Fanukan uh, and the ball bounced up perfectly for the King Gutho to uh, bat it on to the 5'8", Dylan Brown, who found Moses in support. Um, Moses unable to kick. Gutherson landed a 49th minute penalty goal to level the scores eight all after Teague Wilton tackled Ray Stone off the ball. Uh, and Teague Wilton's been suspended uh, for that. I think he's copped two weeks. Um, look, 62nd minute Reed Money try put the in front. And when Gutherson stripped the ball from ha- uh, Braden Hamion Ueli 10 minutes from full time, it looked like they'd hang on. Uh, but uh, Nico Hines with a uh, conversion after full time. Um, got the uh, an emotional uh, win for the uh, Sharkies. So, yeah, Sharkies off the board onto two points now on the table. So, under them. Yes, indeed. And yeah, moving on to the last game of Super Saturday, that was the Cowboys versus the Raiders up there in Townsville, and a surprise result. This one, Cowboys twenty six to six winners. Cowboys tries to Tuolangi, Tabasai Fido, the Little Hammer. Felt and Nanai, and Holmes five from seven. And for the Raiders, all six points from Harrow Iranaira with a try and a conversion. Uh, Tui Lange opened the scoring spectacularly in the sixth minute. Um, Chad Townsend, Tom Dearden put him in for the um, the 23-year-old, though he still had a lot to do. And after receiving the ball, managed to tiptoe down the sideline and just got the ball down in the corner. 
Um, but following that, Jack White in 40-20 put the Raiders into attacking position. And but Hiku, Peter Hiku, intercepted a Matt Frawley pass on his own 10-metre line and raced over halfway. Was he on a bit of a treadmill there? Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, t- a, t- a TB125, yeah. Um, a high shot from uh, yeah. Semi Valame on Tommy Gilbert um, compounded Kebris Woes and Valentine Holmes kicked a penalty goal that put them up 6 0. Um, Kiwis forward Harrow Wiranaira did it all himself, um, scoring an individual solo try. Got the Raiders on the board in the 30th minute. The Cowboys responded though and they upped their defensive resolve. And Holmes and Tuilangi forced errors with some brutal shots on Adam Elliott and Matt Frawley, respectively, before half time. And after managing to stay in the field of play by millimetres early in the match, Tui Lange could not quite repeat that and had a try disallowed just before half time. The Raiders managed to hang on, though, despite the weight of possession against them. Um, but the concerted pressure finally told when the little hammer outlapped his fullback, CNK, and took a Chad Townsend bomb score in the 55th minute. Then it followed by the sin bidding of Hudson Young and the professional after a professional foul, um, holding back Jeremiah Nanai. He chased the Chatty Townsend grubber and the Cowboys running away with it late. Uh, Kyle Felt scoring a 68th of a Pedahiku grubber and then Nanai got his try three minutes after outleaping Canberra Raiders. Defence off a Tom Dearden bomb and, yeah, ran out convincing winners 26-6. Can't get a read on the Raiders, mate. I cannot get a read on the Raiders. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Cowboys were beaten by the Bulldogs in round one and then come out and put, you know, 20 points on the Raiders. So, yeah, I don't know. Weird comp, mate. Speaking of weird comp, the next game, the first on uh, Sunday was in the first Tigers. The tabletop and Knights, uh, 26. Clifford for his young gag eye tries. Clifford, three from six goals. Tigers, four. Kenny Mamalo, their sole try. Uh, Jackson Hastings missing a goal. Um, dealt a, a bit of a blow, too, with Ponga and Clemmer both ruled out before the game, um, and that gave Newcastle the opportunity for a sex toy for the first time in 2022. Um, Got out of the draw. <laughs> um, the Tigers, even more so than the Warriors, are their own worst enemy with poor execution and silly errors, um, silly mistakes. Knights playmaker Jake Click continues to reap the benefit of a full preseason and a Knights partnership with Adam Clune, scoring a try in the fourth um Straight outing, including trials and another uh, composed performance. Obviously, his work with uh, the eighth immortal has done him wonders. Um, the predator Dom uh, Dom Weung on the wing. He also scored back to back NRL teams and looks a much improved player this year. Dane Gagai has helped immeasurably with the uh, that Maroon stalwart again being immense. Um, Young was always on report for a high tackle. Um, the Tigers' first half, mate, it was just a Full of coach killing errors with simple mistakes, drop balls, unnecessary penalties, making it almost impossible to get in the t- contest. Um, that Tyrone Peachy sin for repeated infringements, oh. and then he smacks the ball out of the player's hand. Like he's one of the five, and I suppose if you got five, five captains, you can afford to lose one into the sin bin. Um, yeah, I don't know, mate. Well, um, he would be breaking out in hives, wouldn't he? The love, love would, listeners, mate. whatever. Yeah, he's love listeners, Mary. Um, the Tigers 5'8", Jackson Hastings. He looked the most likely of the Tigers, um, but uh, he's out now for three weeks too. So great for us, bad for the Tigers. Um, All that pressure is going to fall back onto Luke Brooks now. Uh, Yeah, they're a hard watch, the poor old Tigers. They haven't even put their grub how poor they are. Uh, There it is. Um, (laughs) Yeah, but uh, mate, yeah. hype real about the Knights, or is it the fact that they played a, a slow starting Roosters and, and then just the uh, basket case of West Tigers um, is the reason that they're sitting where they are on the on the competition uh, ladder? It's hard to say, you know. Um, it's, yeah, as you said, yeah, it's round two. Uh, they'll come up against some. Uh, stiff opposition, so we'll see how they go by about round five or six. You can usually tell by around round six or seven how most teams are traveling. So, yeah, we'll see. The yeah. nice, but yeah, absolutely surprise packet this year. Yeah. Um, 
bringing us on to the final game of the round. And this was a much hyped game. The Broncos versus the Bulldogs. And the Broncos coming away with a 16-10 victory. Um, Bulldogs, 10 points came from Trista Burns and Marshall King. And Burton kicking one from five. And Broncos, 16. Herbie Farmworth with double. Corey Oates and Reynolds, two from three. Huge build-up. Obviously, this was the debut of Adam Reynolds, the star signing, his debut for his club. Uh, congrats to Corey Oates. So that try was actually his 100th NRL try, so well done to him. Yep. And Dogs Dogs played with a lot of width and a lot of energy, and Matt Burton was a lot more involved in this game than than, it, than he was in round one, proving a constant threat. His running and kicking game in particular, forcing errors from the Brisbane backs and his towering bombs uh, going agonising close to his first try in blue and white. He was held up in the first half. Davida Pangai Jr., didn't he look like a man on a mission uh, against his former club? We knew he would be. It's the way he plays. Um, heavily involved early with some potent runs and tackles and a couple of handy offloads. He did, however, find himself on report on, uh, with contact on the kicker early and with an early challenge on Adam Reynolds. As we said, Corey Oates, 100th try, draws him level with club legend Alan Langer. Uh, so he's in good company there. Um, Addo Carr had a relatively quiet game on the stat sheet, but it was uh, it was anything but in the literal sense, you know, loudly uh, firing up his teammates at every opportunity and celebrating even the tiniest of wins that they that they got on the field like it was a premiership deciding moment. He was well hyped. Uh, yeah, Reynolds did provide what we all thought he would, and that's a steadying influence in his first game of the new club with his reliable kicking game. It was important, and as we said before, exactly what the Rabbitohs are missing in his absence. Yes. Yep. And and he was unlucky that an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic, I should say, piece of improvisation didn't come off when Tony Staggs dropped his between the legs pass for a potential try. Uh, for Herbie Farnworth with his two tries, one of the side's best, um, with a double and some match turning plays, and finishing up with more than two hundred and fifty run meters as well. Yeah, no surprise he's being courted by five different clubs in the moment. Yes. Uh, yeah, mate. So let's look at the ladder um, after round two. So we've got the, the Knights leading um, on four points with the Panthers and the Broncos and the Melbourne Storm uh, rounding out the top four. And then the remaining uh, positions in the top eight are the Cowboys, the Dragons, the Eels and the Roosters all with a uh, win each. Um, the Titans and the Sharks, Bulldogs and the Raiders also all on two points, but outside of the eight on four and against. And then you've got the uh, four winless teams in the Rabbits, the Warriors, the Tigers and the Manly Seagulls in dead last at the moment on the last. So, um, yeah, not where we wanted to see the Warriors after two games. We did say in our preview uh, this um a couple of weeks ago that uh, of our first five games, we expected to win three. Well, we've new, so we need to win the next three um, for the, our predictions to yeah. kind of be on, on track about where we thought we'd be after five weeks. Um, but yeah, it's been heartbreaking. Uh, there has been a few least. people holding us to account to that as well, saying, you said we're going to be on four wins. Yeah. Uh, I know. Sorry, guys. We don't have that kind of pull with the team. <laughs> no. All right, mate. Um, get rid of that graphic. And, um, mate, uh, uh, time for Ruse Rant. What, what are you going to rant that? about this week? Ruse Rant, okay, or Ruse Ramblings, or whatever you want to, whatever you want to refer to it as. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the crowd at the game on Saturday. Um, I must say it was a bit of a disappointing Warriors representation at the game there Saturday afternoon. It used to be something like this: death, taxes, and a big Warriors turnout at Seabus. Super Stadium. And I've been watching the boys play there since 2008. And the Warriors' support has always been massive, even to the point and a number of occasions where we've really eclipsed the Titans. And, you know, the, the roar, the biggest roar of the crowd was for the Warriors. Um, you know, we said last week that with so many games in Southeast Queensland, so we've got about seven, seven of the first 13 games, I think it is, in Southeast Queensland. It's our time to get out there and support the boys. Um, normally at the at Seabus, you know, the away supporters section is pumping, but on Saturday, I, I have to say it was seriously sparse to the point where I was wondering if everyone had forgotten that the game was on. 
Um, look, obviously, I do understand it was a very hot day. Um, the weather may have played its part, as it, yeah, it, as it was extremely hot, and we can attest to that. The sun was following us all the way <laughs> to the back of the stadium there, so it was definitely warm in the direct sunshine. And um, it was. but can we put the lack of uh, Warriors crowd down to the the first round loss? I don't know. Um, We've been in worse positions before and the, the guys, the Warriors faithful all fronted up. So, yeah, I, I have to say I was a bit disappointed. Just a bit disappointed in that because it used to be something that was a given. And I'm sure every year when the Titans get to pick out who they want to play at home, number one would be the Warriors because of all the extra bums on seats that they get there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't the case on Saturday. But having said that, it was great to see some of the same faces that we'd seen from the sunny coast and always great to catch up with. With the uh, Warriors faithful there at the footy. Absolutely, yeah, mate. All right, mate, yeah. what have we got for Hammer's Hot Topic this week? Oh, mate, mine's a bit of a contentious one. Um, <laughs> strap yourself in, mate. Uh, it's gonna be, oh, yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a rant. Um, mate, I'm, I'm slightly annoyed at uh, some people's uh, misconceived and wrong opinions uh, of what they think is fact in regards to you and I, Ruin Hammer, and the so-called perks that we constantly receive. Um, I want to set the record straight because I hate hearing this. Um, I hate people reaching out and asking us for stuff. Look, we have never received, we have never been offered, we have never asked for anything from the Warriors organisation, the management, the staff, or the players. We don't get free merch. Um, every bit of Warriors merch we have, We've bought from the Warriors store, Rebel, Canterbury, Puma, just like everyone else. We don't get free tickets to the games. We purchase all our own tickets. We always have. Um, we have never been given a free ticket to any game. Uh, this year, because we've, we have built um, a trusting relationship with the Warriors, we are having the same tickets held for us at Morton Daly Stadium, but we're still purchasing them. The, the Warriors membership staff are just holding four tickets for us, and we're still purchasing some, the same as everybody else. Um, when people see posts uh, of us at games or, or, or out and about interacting with players and, and so forth, and, and they say things like, oh, gee, you guys are lucky, or they post, oh, gee, you guys are lucky. I uh, wish I could do what you do. There's nothing lucky about anything we do. Um, we've worked very, very hard to get to the position we're in. Um, and to get to see the players after the game, we hang around after the game. That's it. Uh, we see where, where they exit the ground from, you know, which is obviously at the back of the grandstand uh, where the sheds are. We see where the team bus is and we can wait. It's no spef special privilege. Any fan can do what we, we, we do in that regard. Yes, we do have good relationships with the staff and the current squad and ex-players and some family members. But as I said, we've worked very hard to build these relationships and these bonds. Um, we've earned their trust and respect and we certainly don't take that for granted um what we we're doing um from this uh, aside from the generous support from our patreons which we we greatly appreciate it actually costs us money to do this webcast and the podcast every week um the licenses we need to stream it um the programs that we use all the graphics the daily posts all those apps and programs cost money um the time it takes to prepare the show the research we do the research we do when we have a live guest on all these things are things that take away from our normal lives. Now, I'm not whinging about that. We do that because we love our team. We love our club and we enjoy putting this together. Um, what I don't like is just people just assuming that um, we're in a privileged position and we're not. We're just two fans, the same as everybody else. Just, decided, just like you guys. Yeah. Decided to do a podcast um, or a webcast. Didn't know really what was involved with, with doing it and it's kind of grown from there and that's it. Um, you know, we're appreciated by the club because of what we do in terms of, you know, promoting them, uh, you know, talking to the players and, and supporting them. You know, we're going to all the games and so forth. But that's it. That's as far as it goes. We've never received anything from the club. Uh, they've never offered and we've never asked. We never will. Um, so I just wanted to, to get that out in the open um, so that people are aware of... Um, of, of what's involved because it, it just frustrates me when people think otherwise. 
Yeah, exactly. We're, we're not we're not any more privileged. As as you said, mate, we're just a couple of fans that started it because this is the kind of content that we probably, we thought at the time we would have enjoyed watching. So, um, it, and it all comes down to building relationships and, and we've been yeah. fortunate to have built some really good relationships with our uh, the, the Warriors coaching staff, players, and, and especially the ex-players as well. And we formed some really good friendships with some of those guys and that's, and it basically just comes down to that. And yeah, yeah, we're not we're not like super fans. We're not extra special fans. We don't get given, as you said, we don't get given anything. And um, and that's why we are so appreciative of you guys who do support us on Patreon and you guys who have bought shirts as well, because that's what it's it's you know just uh, in the name of um, you know covering our costs. Because you said there does it does cost us money to make the show, but we do yeah. it because we love it. It's a labor of love, and we're just going to continue to do it because. We love the team and we love footy and we love nothing more than talking footy with all you guys. Absolutely. And thanks, Anthony Peake, uh, for the kind comments, mate. Uh, appreciate it. All right, let's move on, mate. Uh, round two. Yes, exactly. Round three. Round three. <laughs> let's not relive round two. Round three. Round three uh, the team names to take on the West Tigers in the first leg of the Mike Doreen Cup. Obviously, every time we play the Tigers, that's the silverware that's up up for grabs. So the team named by Brownie this week, Mister Mister Brown's boys. Oh, yeah, mate. yep. Just bear with me. Let's have a look at Mister Brown's boys this week. Okay, and we've got Reese Walsh, Adam Pompey, Jesse Arthur's, Rocco Berry, uh, Marcelo Montoya, uh, Harris Tavita, and Nicolima in the halves. Uh, AFB captain. Egan, Lodge, Aitken, Katoa, and Josh Curran on the bench. We have Jazz Tavanga, Bunty Afoa, Aaron Penne, Bailey Sirinan on the extended bench. We have the Merch, BMM, Otokolo, Pedersen Rabadi, Kepu, and Rituva, and Ed Cozy. Um, Ash Taylor obviously out with injury. Cody Nikarima, the only change to the side that was beaten by the Titans last week, and Lodge being. Um, pretty, I guess, ineffective in his 20-minute cameo last week. Expect him to have a huge game uh, this weekend. His, his involvement will be absolutely crucial. No real ch uh, surprises, mate. Um, again, you know, uh, barring um, injury, there are any uh, changes. Uh, if anyone listened to Nathan Brown's press conference after the Titans loss, he, he said as such. He said that it's a young squad and, you know, um, they've got to being accountable for their mistakes. And, you know, you, you learn from your mistakes that, uh, that they're making. And um, he, he actually said that there wasn't going to be many changes. So it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It's a good-looking side. I thought the side late could have beaten the Titans, uh, and they should have. And I think this side um, will beat the Tigers. Uh, so I, I don't expect any late changes to the 17. I think it'll be 1-17. to 17. Um, barring you know, COVID or some tripping over their toes at training or something like that, but, <laughs> but the, this is, is the contentious uh area for us is the halves. Um, the, the guys, uh, whoever gets the, the nod over the next coming weeks until it comes back, they've really got to put in. Uh, and as I said, I've been very impressed with uh, round one at fullback and his round two playing at 5 8. I think he's done really, really well. And um, the other two guys, Cody and and uh. Ash Taylor really, really need to, to uh, stamp his authority on the game this week. Um, he has to get involved, absolutely. He can't be a passenger. No. Get his hands no. dirty. Yep. You know what? I just want him I just want him to look interested. That's what I want. Yep. I want him to look interested. He looked he looked interested and he looked engaged when he was playing in that uh, all stars game for the uh, Maldi. And in round one I hardly noticed him on the field. So um, I just want him to have, be interested and be engaged in the game and yeah, have a crack. That's that's all we ask. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll look at some of the other games to be played this weekend. And Thursday night, we have the Dragons versus the Sharks, the local derby. Um, and we have the Dragons. George Burgess stood down for inappropriate behaviour, as he said. Moses Mbai named a hooker for the injured Andrew McCulloch for the Sharks. Bye. Uh, team Bye. 
out suspended and Talakai named to replace him in the back row. Braden Trindle named on the bench. I'm yeah. expecting and and Mulatalo also out in so yeah. Okay, well, who's going to do all the celebrating then? Uh, um, it'll have yeah. to be Matt Mac- <laughs> Ikevalu and his shoe sales and friends. <laughs> I'm expecting a, I'm expecting a great game here. Actually, uh, to, to well, I guess the the Dragons being the surprise packets and the team, the Sharks being the team that uh, everyone expected to improve and has improved. Um, I think I think it'll be a close one. I think the Sharks might just have a little bit too much for the Dragons. It'll be a close result though, one to twelve. Sharks. Oh, I like, yeah, I like what you say there, mate. The local derby played at Net Strata um, should be a close game. The Dragons unlucky against the Panthers last week, and um, they. they they're obviously a better team than I gave them credit for of the year. I think Hook has them playing a really good brand of footy at the moment. Um, McCulloch is a big admission. His spine combination with Ben Hunt is producing some really good footy. And I think for the reason, reason um, because I know they've had two very close games, but I think Nico Hines has picked up where he's left off at the Storm. Dale Finucane as well. Um, yeah, I, I think the Sharks. I think it'll be close. I think Sharks won is uh, what I'm going yeah. with. Um, Friday night, six o'clock. It is the first <laughs> leg of the Magdalene Cup. There it is in all its glory. Most prestigious the silverware night. in the game. <laughs> that's what. That's what every person. Why do you think Papa Lee's signed to go there? Why do you think RP Corusau has to the Tigers? It's to play for the Magdalene Cup. Um, so. The Tigers, uh, Jackson Hastings, uh, he was named, although he, he has been out suspended. So for a change there, uh, probably Tyrone Peachy will come into 5'8". Um, Luke Garner in for Kelma Tualangi. Luke Garner does like scoring a try against the Warriors. He first, doesn't so, mind, um, hey? Yeah. You know, he does double against us last year uh, yep. in the game at St. Coast. Um, as Taylor's out, Cody Marie Marin, as we said. Um, look. We spoke about the Warriors. It's a must-win for both teams, but um, more so for us because that's who we support. Cody must now realise that this is his last chance to secure a regular spot in the squad for this season. Um, he's off contract at the end of the year, so whether he's playing for a contract with us or a contract with somebody else, he's got to start showing his. Uh, I think Matt Lodge will be a massive influence in this game. And uh, I'm actually tears 13+. plus. Mate, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to tip the Warriors, but it's going to be a very, very nervous pacing around the room kind of four-point victory, as both games were last year. <laughs> I know. Ah, <laughs> moving on edge of the seat. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah, on the edge of the seat, pacing the room four points. Of course, you know me. Uh, Rabbitohs versus Roosters is the first, second game on the Friday, and this is always a massive lineup uh, for the Rabbitohs. Uh, massive clash, I should say. Uh, Tane Milne into the centres, and Jackson Paulo back to the wing. Probably a bit, bit better balance there. And for the Roosters, Momorowski uh, to the centres, Billy Smith to the wing, Nat Butcher into the starting side, and uh, Lord Farquhar named on the bench. But he's, yep. but he's not Lord Farquhar anymore, is he? He's had a haircut. Very disappointed. I'm very disappointed, mate. We get a new one emerge with, uh, with uh, what Ryan Pappenhausen looking like Joe Dirt, and um, <laughs> and we lose Lord Farquhar because he had a haircut. So it's quite Come a on. regular guy now. It's a bit selfish, isn't it? Really. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick a, a narrow Roosters win, one to twelve. There, I think they'll. The Rabbitohs just haven't impressed me in attack, apart from that twelve minute burst when they when the Storm had a man down the sin bin. They haven't really looked like scoring. So, yeah, I think the Roosters will get away with this one. Yeah, should be game of the round. Should be. Uh, but South really need to, to lift. If they're to win, Walker needs to have a big... been very quiet for those two rounds. Um, the Roosters did find some form last week. They'll be hard to beat. I, I think it'll be a close Roosters win. I'm tipping the Roosters 1-12. Uh, Saturday. Saturday is at Bathurst, actually. The Panthers have taking this game to Bathurst, and it's the Panthers versus the Knights, uh, the two leading, uh, two table leading teams. Uh, for the Panthers, just a change, Taylor May comes in for the injured Brian To'o, and for the Knights, Caleb Ponger is back injury, Loxlin Fitzgibbon is out injured, Jira Momosa named on the bench, 
Um, mate, great start of the season for the North, but before everyone gets carried away, let's remember, as I said, they played a, a flat Roosters to and the Tigers. Um, I think they'll become crummy, crashing back down to earth with a huge thud this week. And although it's no Nathan, uh, I still think the, the Panthers are classy enough and they'll get the job done over the Knights. Yeah, as we said earlier, they were going, they're going to get tested sooner or later, um, the Knights. And I think, yeah, this will be this is their first major test. Uh, yeah, yep. I can see the Panthers running away with this one as well. Uh, yeah. Moving on, the Storm versus Eels. Now, this is an interesting one. No changes to either side. Don't forget, last year the Eels beat the Storm twice. Um, mm. So before everyone starts saying, yeah, it's a no brand it's a Storm. Um, would win this one, but uh, I, I feel that if Storm are able to keep all their players on the field, they may have a little bit too yeah. much there for the Eels. So I'm picking a, a, a Storm victory 1-12. to 12. There, There is uh, two changes of the Storm. Harry Grant's been ruled out with COVID. Okay. And Tyron Wishart, who would be his replacement, has also been with COVID. Ah, he was a close yeah, player. COVID. Yep. Yeah, so um, there will be two changes to that um, uh, that the Storm, uh, storm side. side. I, I yep. don't know what it will be. We'll have to wait and see changes at this stage to the eels um yeah i still think the the storm um spine of hughes munster and pappenhausen uh will get them home i think it'll be close but yeah one to 12 for me next game the raiders versus the titans uh the raiders welcome back jordan rapiner uh he's back from suspension uh brad schneider he's back from his bout of covid Named at halfback uh, for the Titans, as expected. No changes to the side that narrowly beat the um, the Warriors last weekend. Uh, mate, I can't hear it read on Canberra. Um, you know, they'd come from behind win against the Sharks in round one. They got off the park by the Cowboys in round two. Rapuna being back is a huge in for them. He's, he's always uh, high involvement. Um, he's a bit of a niggler too. He can get under the skin of some of these boys. Yeah. Um, and I, I must say, I thought the Titans were very lucky to get away with the win at home last week against the Warriors. Um, I don't think the trip to Canberra will do them any favours, and I'm actually going to tip the Raiders 1-12. to Yeah, I think being a home game for the Raiders, uh, they'll return to a bit of form here. The Titans weren't spectacular um, last week in beating us, so I think I'll, I'll stick with the Raiders. Uh, just a quick shout out to Jacko who's watching on YouTube, mate. Thanks for joining us and I appreciate all your comments. Um, Sunday. This is no, this is a this is a round for some big clashes, isn't it? Local derbies. It's got everything. Broncos versus the yeah. Cowboys. These are always fantastic games and always go always really close, often golden point. Um, at the time of printing, no changes to either side. I don't believe there's been any COVID disasters there as of yet. So Broncos and Cowboys both unchanged. This will be interesting. The Cowboys, uh, you know, str struggling round one, having a big win against the Raiders last week. Uh, but it is being played at Suncorp. And with Adam Reynolds back in the Broncos side, I'm going to pick them to for a close win, as it always is in these uh, games. Yeah, Cowboys with a big prize last week, piling on the points against the Raiders. Broncos with two wins from two games and a home game at Suncorp on a Sunday Arvo. Um, That's what they've always wanted, I think remember? That's what they don't want, the yeah. Friday night games. They want the Sunday Arvo games. So I'm sure there'll be a massive that's, crowd out there. Yeah, That's exactly right. Um, yeah, I like that tight, uh, Broncos uh, lineup. I, I'll only be playing Selwyn Cobb at fullback, uh, but that's just me. Um yeah, I, I think it goes in a close one. Broncos 1-12. to And the final game of the round is the um, Wooden Spoon Seagulls versus uh, no changes to either side that has been... Um, mate, Trent Barrett's got the Bulldogs playing some good footy. Um, their new recruits are all stepping up. Uh, Manly really need to find something. Uh, Cherry Evans, Tom Trevor. Jake Toyovic, they, they've got to really stand up. One of their better players the past two weeks has been one Croker at, at Hooker. He's okay. had a lot of involvement. Um, I, I'm torn, mate. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm torn. But I've tipped Manly one in round two. I'm going to tip him again in round three and see how I go. 
Um, so I'll tip the Seagulls 1-12. to 12. Hacker Time Rugby says, call me crazy, but I reckon the Knights are the real deal. Well, you're not crazy at the moment, but no. we'll see. Um, yeah, as regards to that game, I'm going to go the other way. I, th- I reckon the Bulldogs might be able to spring an upset here. It's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not right. saying that with a lot we'll of confidence. See. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> Um, guys, don't forget about our live shows coming up. So our live chats and events in 2022. So every Tuesday, we've got our NRLW breakdown. And next week will be our review of the final round of the uh, home and away season. Uh, it'll be our round five review. Every Wednesday, obviously, our NRL show. So next week will be our round three review. Hopefully, talking about retaining the uh, Mike Doreen Cup. And, of course, we'll continue to make all those connections. <laughs> Um, with the former players and bring you more of those interviews that you guys all enjoy. Uh, yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, keep an eye out on our events page on Facebook for any upcoming pre-fan uh, fan pre-game meetups as well before other games. Uh, um, next week, we'll be announcing our pre-game meetups for the Redcliffe uh, games, the games being played at Morton Daly Stadium. Um, our good friend Lisa Marie from Warrior Nation is in the... Uh, final stages of organising the venue there for us for those meetups. So um, that'll be great for anyone going to our home games at Morton Daly Stadium, a place to meet up uh, and, um, and uh, you know, uh, make some connections with like-minded fans and over to the game and watch the boys win. Uh, just a reminder, don't forget that um, Magic Round, uh, Round 10, we've got a Magic Round fan meetup at the Lord Alfred Hotel starting at 12 p.m. and that's on Saturday the 5th. Uh, 14th of May. So put that in your diaries, in your uh, mental notebooks, whatever it is that you've got. I'm going to have a couple of special guests with us. Warrior 76, Mark Tukey. Warrior 86, Kevin Campion. And Warrior 127, uh, Grant Valley will all be joining us for them. Yes, absolutely. Hoping that maybe uh, one or two more former legends may come, but we'll see how we go with that. Um. We just want yeah. to talk about the merchandise as well, the merchandise pre-sale that we just had. We want to, we really want to thank all you guys who did purchase the Steve Price Halftone Heroes shirts uh, during our very limited pre-sale window last week. So those are now in production with our good friends at Torius, and we'll be getting them out to you as soon as we can. Um, so we'll be in contact with you guys soon to get those uh, postage details and uh, you have you repping uh, Warrior 121 in no time. Make sure you guys do keep an eye out for for our next shirt, which will be released in a few weeks. Again, it'll be uh, available for a very limited window. And uh, purchasing a shirt from us, look, it's just another way that you can help support us. So we, we, we really do appreciate that. And that's it's all in the name of uh, everything that you give to us goes back into the show. Exactly right. Uh, second leg of the mic important game in the first true game in 30 31 month true mate it is uh, um, it is and uh hoping that the mike Doreen up might make it over there for the uh, <laughs> itself exactly. um sit side red blue and green streamers on one side and some orange and black streamers on the other it's the players run the dressing room they can run past it and go Stevie Williams has a quick question here for me. Lakers, will they make the play in? I'm afraid, Stevie. I think the Lakers' time is up. Go the Heat. Go the Heat, eh? Yeah. Are the, are the Nets there, mate? Are the Nets doing anything special? Net, Nets are doing all right. Um, we, we might we might knock you out in the first round of the playoffs, but you know, no shame losing to the best. <laughs> I never went for the Nets because they were black and white, the Warriors. I might have to look for a team that's uh, red, blue, and green. Is there any red, blue, and green teams in the air? Uh, no, not really. There's, there's red and blue, so you've got the Pistons and the uh, who's going on? Pistons and Philly, Philadelphia. No green on them, though. No. It's only really uh, uh, Milwaukee with green. You can jump on their bandwagon if you want. Yeah. No, nah, don't want to go, man. Go Grizzlies. Uh, you know, yeah, good. We're good flying to down tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, flying down tomorrow. Hammer, hope to see you at the game, bro. Uh, mate, send me a message tomorrow. Uh, remember, we had a bit of a chat on Saturday night about meeting up tomorrow night. Um, 
maybe uh, seeing uh, people as well. So send me a message when you touch down in Sydney. Let me know where you're going to be, and um, we'll connect, uh, mate, and maybe catch up for dinner tomorrow. Be good, um, mate. Just a reminder to all our fans out there that uh, we are on Patreon. Um, we talk about it every week. Subscription support plan that enables you, our followers, to show your support of us and the content we provide. Um, it supports multiple tier levels to suit budgets and each tier level will have its own reward. But for, for now, we've just got uh, our basic bronze tier up and running. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you can head to our Patreon page and I'll just get the link up there as we speak. And you can, uh, you can sign up to our bronze tier, as we said, the lowest possible amount. We've got that at three, just $3 a month, which is next to nothing. And we've also... As we said, partnered with Torius, who produce our awesome merchandise. And there's going to be some merchandise that will be available soon that will be only for Patreon packages. So keep your eyes open for that. And we'll have exclusive Patreon-only merchandise. So there'll be some tees and some hats and other things like that. They'll only be available to silver, gold, diamond, and platinum subscribers. So once those tiers are available on Patreon. Absolutely. And... As always, we want to thank our bronze tier subscribers, Daniel Delore, Peregrine Falconer, Sean Kurzweil, Fabian Moroa, Stevie Williams, Christian Catley, Alf Tuolave, TK Harris, Ted Clark, Inamete, Lisa Marie Bateman, Ken Wills, Nigel Phillips, Kane Fraser, Jermaine Downs, and Malcolm Earnshaw. We thank you very much and uh, appreciate your support. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Legends. We appreciate each and every one of you. Um, don't forget, if you do miss on it and miss out on any of our live shows, you can catch up on Facebook page by going to the video section or you can go to YouTube channel and um, catch up there. The easiest way to find our videos, though, is to head to our link tree. And uh, I've got the link on screen for you again there. And it has direct links to each of our guest interviews, special presentations and uh, all that kind of thing. And don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel so that you will never miss any of our streamed content. Mate, it doesn't cost a thing. And speaking of YouTube, I'm going to be introducing a bit of a new segment um, that will be exclusive to our YouTube channel. So in an effort to improve my health and fitness and get rid of some of these COVID kilos that I keep telling you about, these, these guts mm -hmm. are the, uh, <laughs> is forcing me not to wear white jerseys at the moment, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm going to be going on early morning walks. And often when I'm walking first thing in the morning i'm sort of there reminiscing about some of the great times that we've had uh with the warriors and some of the great games and great moments of warriors history and that's something i'm really big on is warriors history and and statistics and that kind of thing it's really my my bread and butter so from tomorrow i'm going to bring be bringing you uh a little segment called rue remembers so just on my morning walk i'll just be talking about a certain game or a certain moment in warriors history It'll be just a short video uh, where I look back on these moments and just sort of give it to you, give my own sort of unique perspective on that. So I'm hoping to have one of those up by tomorrow. That, that's awesome, mate. Um, that'll be great content. You've always got uh, great memories that you um, share with me about games that you've been to and results that you've uh, been a part of. So, yeah, I look forward to, um, to watching them. That'll be good. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, if you're a podcast, uh, that's all right, mate. You just threw me for a minute there. If you're a podcast, <laughs> you can catch all of our episodes on our podcast platforms. Um, they're all loaded up, uh, ready to go on Thursday morning. Um, and please head to our Ruin Hammer Instagram page where we upload content daily to keep our followers informed of all our upcoming events, Warriors news, player movements, and all other Warriors related content. Yes, well, that's it for tonight's show. Thank you so much, all you guys who continue to support us at Ruin Hammer. It is very much appreciated. Absolutely. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week uh, for our NRL breakdown on Tuesday and again for our round three review on Wednesday. Uh, look, if you're in Sydney... Uh, and you can get to them. I know it's a shit time, 6 o'clock on a Friday night, but if you can get to Campbelltown, uh, the train station is right where the uh, field is, Lamia train station. Um, get there, watch the, uh, support the boys. Um, they only have a handful of games here in Sydney this year, so um, you know it would be great if you can get out to, 
to uh, watch them play. Um, aside from that, everyone have a good week. Go the Warriors. That's it. Stay safe. Go the Warriors. Thanks, everyone.